Hi, I'm um, in uh, Heptonstall today, and uh, this is where uh, the poet Sylvia Plath is buried, as you can see behind me. And her grave is full of uh, forget-me-not flowers and uh, pens and little stones on top, and it's it's somewhere that people come to go and come to have a look and, and sort of pay their respects. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about Philip Larkin's essay about Sylvia Plath whilst I'm here. Um, from, before I do that, I'm going to I'm going to pay my own respects to this book, which is by a writer called Michael Kerrigan, and it's called Who Lies Where: A Guide to Famous Graves. And I've become very fond of this book because it's absolutely scathing about virtually everybody that it, it bothers to mention. So I thought I'd give you a flavour. And um, if you want to contact Michael Kerrigan and tell him what you think of this, I'm sure he'll be pleased to hear from you. So, Hepton Stall. In the churchyard is the much fought over grave of the late Mrs Ted Hughes, the poet Sylvia Plath, described on her tombstone to the outrage of certain sections of the feminist community who want to see her as the women's movement's Thomas Beckett, as Sylvia Plath Hughes. Few writers have polarised opinions so strongly, not just as to the controversial content of her verse, but as to its quality, which tends to be seen as either absolutely inspired or utterly fraudulent. So, you may or may not agree with Mr Kerrigan. Um, but Philip Larkin... Um, wrote quite a lot of um, reviews and essays through his career, which are amazing pieces of writing in themselves and sometimes get a little bit overlooked, um, you know, in favour of the, the poetry. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I think they're great and they're really worth reading. So in uh, 1982, uh, Philip Larkin wrote an essay called um, Horror Poet, which is a review of um, the collected poems um, of Sylvia Plath that was published in 1981 by Faber. And it was edited by Ted Hughes, who'd put them into chronological order. Um, and uh, so I think uh, Larkin found this a really interesting um, book to read, looking at the poems in chronological order and seeing that the progression of Plath as a writer. And uh, as he's reading um, the uh, collection... Uh, he says uh, the first hundred poems or so um, just really kind of show how prolific she was and he didn't really feel that uh, they were particularly interesting as poems in themselves but were kind of reflective of the, of the life she was living and the topics that she was interested in. Um, he says they're crammed with invention but they lack emotional centre. Um, but then uh, he says that that then changes. He, he's thinking about Plath as somebody that's looking for their topic, you know, as a great writer that looks for the kind of topic that they, or, or you know, the theme of their writing. And uh, he says the individual note or theme by and with which he or she will henceforth be identified. Um, and he talks about the poem um, that begins the day she visited the dissecting room. And he says this poem actually is the start of um, where Plath finds her theme. And as he says, it was variously neurosis, insanity, disease, death, horror, terror. And he calls this her predestined material. And he, he believes that she does take command of this material. But he also says is our excitement of, of this poetry nullified by the nature of the material? And I think that's something that Larkin kind of ponders on in this essay. Um, is this the, the kind of, is this theme of horror and terror and uh, disease and neurosis, can this really be the theme of great poetry? Um, and you know, you may, you may not agree with Larkin at all. Um, and you know, he does, categorise some of her poetry as brilliant you know he's not in, he's not entirely critical he's certainly not dismissing her as a poet um, he says they are to the highest degree original um, but he's trying to look at how valuable he thinks these poems are ultimately and he ends the review with how valuable they are depends on how highly we rank the expression of experience with which we can in no sense identify and from which we can only turn with shock and sorrow. And uh, I, I just find that a really kind of interesting summary, especially when you, you think of Larkin's own poems, um, because 
the experience that Larkin writes about, uh, you know, the everyday experience of, you know, the things that happen to you when you're at work, when you're in the park, the things that you see, being in the garden, um, being with, um, you know, loved ones, in the hospital, ambulances, all the kind of everyday world um, that he writes about, um, which is very different, obviously, from the content of Sylvia Plath's poetry. And uh, clearly, some, you know, Larkin finds Plath's poetry difficult, really, because of that. So, yeah, um, it's, it's a very interesting review, and um, I hope... I hope Sylvia Plath doesn't mind me coming up here and talking about it a little bit. I think she was uh, strong enough to take a little bit of criticism um, from a, a great writer like Philip Larkin.